So I am back from my three week stay in Wales and this time I brought something back with me. Some wild garlic. Now I absolutely love garlic and um, last year I remember searching for wild garlic and I couldn't find it. And I know that it grows near enough everywhere so I was completely searching in the wrong places. But um, I was super happy when Charles said that there was some wild garlic growing on the farm. So one day I headed down to the area which he told me about and I came across the mother load of wild garlic in this beautiful little woodland area right next to the river. There was just hundreds and hundreds of wild garlic there. So what I've done was I picked some while I was there and I made some of the scones and the pesto and they were delicious. So what I wanted to do was come back and share the recipes with you. So today I will be cooking in the allotment pot and shed. Um, I will be cooking wild garlic and cheese scones and some wild garlic pesto. So this wild garlic here has travelled for four hours in the car with me. And it did look a little bit limp but I put it in this jug of water and it seems to have revived it a bit. Now the leaves are the things that you eat the most but you can eat the flowers, they are completely edible and they are perfect as a garnish in salads and soups um, and they also look pretty in a vase as well. But the leaves are the things that we'll be using today. So I've got all of the ingredients and all the tools that I need. So I think the first thing that I'll be making is some of the wild garlic and cheese scones. So let's get started. For the wild garlic and cheese scones, you will need a mixing bowl, a measuring jug, a pastry brush, a two inch round cutter, and a sharp knife or a herb cutter. For the ingredients, you will need 250 grams of self-raising flour, 50 grams of butter, 25 grams of strong cheddar grated, a small bunch of wild garlic, chopped, one egg and a hundred millilitres of milk. So the first thing you want to do is get your mixing bowl and you want to put in the 250 grams of self-raising flour and the 50 grams of butter. I measured these all out beforehand just to make it a bit <laughs> quicker. Then you want to rub the butter into the flour. Just make sure you wash your hands before you do this. Now this recipe will make roughly 10 scones. which is just right really, but we actually ate them all in, um, in two days on the farm. <laughs> so obviously if you want more then just double the recipe, double the ingredients. Because they don't last very long in the house. I can assure you that. So once all the butter has been rubbed in to the flour, and just make sure that there's no big lumps of butter in there. That's pretty much perfect. The next thing you want to do is add the cheese. So that's grated, ready. Add the cheese into the mixture and then you want to chop up the wild garlic and add that to the mixture too. So I'm just gonna try and get as much flour off my hands. Put the bowl to one side. Now I will show you all my handy cutter. I absolutely love this. <laughs> It's just, it just makes cutting herbs so much easier and quicker. 
obviously you can use a sharp knife but um these are great i don't know what they're called <laughs> i just call it a herb cutter but it, it, they're just amazing so i've got about seven eight leaves there which should be more than enough so you just want to cut the wild garlic up now you can do this roughly um, it all depends on how you want the garlic in the mixture last time the the bits I added were quite big but obviously it all comes down to your taste and, and what you like I would use a chopping board but I've forgotten it <laughs> I actually thought it was in the in the cupboard but it wasn't I need like a washing up bowl up here because you know I take things home to wash up and they just stay there then <laughs> they're lost in the kitchen forever I just quickly add that before you chop your wild garlic up give it a good wash because you know there may be slugs and all sorts of insects on the leaves um, which you don't really want in your scones of course so just give it all a good chop I don't really like any gigantic bits in there but obviously it takes a while and now all I can smell is garlic <laughs> I really really like garlic I am afraid to admit right I think that's done so once that's all chopped add that to the bowl And then mix the cheese and the wild garlic into the mixture. Now the next thing to do is to mix the egg and the milk together. So I'm going to do that in the measuring jug just because it makes life so much easier because you can measure the milk out. So you need 100 millilitres of milk well, where are we? here we are so tiny bit of milk and then one egg So just get a fork out and beat that together so the egg and the milk combines so once that's ready Add it to the mixture and just make a bit of space there's still some wild garlic on the cutter can't leave any wild garlic out so now you've got the egg, egg I'm sorry the egg and the milk mixture add it to the flour but leave a tiny bit in the jug because you'll be using that later so now is the messy bit now I'm going to use a fork to start with 
but you want to create a dough now. your hands in there and just knead it together this is when it gets a bit messy it tends to take a little while to all stick together but just keep on kneading it and it will get there in the end Our stand up, I think, because it's a little bit easier to push down. So make sure you get all the flour mix mixture pressed in. and then just knead it. Right, I think that's about done. So now you need to roll it out to about two centimeter thick. So I'll just put a little bit of flour down on there. Grab the rolling pin and roll it out to roughly two centimetres thick. Now before I cut them out using the cutter, I bought a tray with me so I can put them in the oven. So just get some of that spare butter and rub a bit onto the baking tray. Just so the scones don't stick to the base. So that's ready. Now I will cut them out. So I'm using a two inch round cutter and I'm going to use the nice fluted edge just to make it look pretty. And then just pop them on the tray. Now they don't expand too much. So obviously if you want them bigger then just use a bigger cutter. Like I said, you should get about 10. One more left. So what I do is I will knead this together again and roll it out to two centimetre thick again and just keep cutting these scones out until the pastry is gone. I will also put the oven on now. I will preheat it um, to around, where is it? 220 Celsius or a gas mark seven. So this is a gas one, but there's no numbers on it. So I'm just gonna do it to about medium. And they take about 10 to 12 minutes in the oven. So I'm gonna cut these out, preheat the oven, and then stick them in. So I've just turned the oven on <laughs> and what is best to do is preheat your oven beforehand but because my oven is so small and because it's gas it doesn't take long to warm up it's actually really warm now so these are ready to go in last thing I'm going to do to them is just use the last of that milk and egg mixture and a pastry brush and just brush some of the mixture onto the tops 
of the scones this will make the tops nice and brown and delicious so they're ready to go in now and they will be in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes or until they're nicely golden brown um, and then we will serve them up with some butter <laughs> and I can't wait so while they're in I'm just going to do a little bit of tidying up in the allotment but obviously keep an eye because they don't take very long but um, it won't be long until we'll be tucking in So they've had about 15 minutes now um, and I checked on them just now and they were doing lovely. Ah, they are perfect. So let's get them out without <laughs> burning yourself. Let's move that over. And then while that's on I'll put the other tray in because there's a few more left there. Do that back up. Oh, they look so nice. Right, Let's pop them onto this plate. Oh, nice and hot. Do one more. Move the tray out the way. And what I'm actually going to do before I make the pesto is I'm going to eat one because. I need to stop the door from closing. They are really delicious. Hot. So I'm going to open one up. Mm, this one. Mm. <laughs> they are really delicious. I'm just going to get some butter. Put that on there. Oh, it's melting in. Lovely. Now you can eat these cold, but they are really nice when they are fresh out of the oven. And my little oven done perfectly. The first time I've used the oven, it's done brilliantly. Right. Mmm. I swear I don't put these noises on, they are delicious. They're just, ah, oh, they're perfect. So we're gonna finish this one off. I'll wait for them to come out the oven and then I will start on the wild garlic pesto. Just have to make sure that I don't eat all of these. <laughs> That's so good. To make roughly one medium jar of wild garlic pesto, you will need a hand blender and a beaker. You will also need 100 grams of wild garlic, roughly chopped, 70 grams of pine nuts, 60 grams of olive oil, and half a teaspoon of salt. So pestos are one of the most simplest and easiest things to make. There's very few ingredients and it doesn't take a lot of time to make it at all and it's really delicious. You can add it to pasta dishes, you can add it on top of pizzas just to name a few things. So it, it's really delicious. The one thing that you do need however is a hand blender and this one's cordless which is ideal really because I'm up the allotment in the shed and there's no electricity so this one's cordless and I have a beaker to, uh, to blend it all in. Now you can actually get um, special hand blenders which you can take the top off and put them on like a mini chopper. We have one of them at home but I couldn't get a cordless one to do that but this is perfect, this is fine. So let's start with doing the pesto. 
Now I've roughly chopped all of the wild garlic, so there's 100 grams of wild garlic there. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is just add half of that mixture to the beaker just to see how it goes because the beaker is quite small you might find that it's best to do it in in stages and then I will add the pine nuts into the beaker so again I'll add half of them so all together you need 70 grams of pine nuts but I'll just put half in for now and then you need some olive oil about 60 grams of olive oil a new bottle just need to open it <laughs> now it's best to add the olive oil a little bit by little bit so I will add a small bit now just about half which is about there and then just simply blend it together As you can see, it goes down quite small. So what I'll do is I will mix that up a little bit using a spoon, just so you don't get left with any big bits. See, there's some big bits at the bottom there. I'll blend that together again, and then I will add the rest of the ingredients. <laughs> the garlic's really strong which is good I love garlic so I will just add the rest of the wild garlic and the rest of the pine nuts and a little bit more olive oil I blend it all together until it, there's a nice consistency there and then we can put it in the jar oh there's the pine nuts forget them and there we go it's literally that simple to make pesto now the only jar I had at home was this really big jar, <laughs> so it's only a little bit in the bottom. But um, not to worry because I'm sure that will be eaten quite quickly in our house. Now obviously if you want to make a bigger batch then just double or triple the ingredients and you'll be able to fill a large jar instead of just a small bit. <laughs> but. I know exactly what I'm going to do with that and I will enjoy it with some pasta for dinner one night. And that's it. So we've got our scones and we've got some pesto all from free foraged food. So um, I just want to say thank you to Charles for letting me pick his wild garlic. Um, and Thank you for watching. I will see you all next time with another recipe in the purple potting shed.